All right, you're back with the Arthur Moti on this Wednesday morning, and this is the podcast for the Miracle Next Door. So I just want to start off by giving the Heavenly Father praise and honor in the name of Jesus. And today's lesson is about putting God first, making God a priority in our life. And I am speaking from my moment with God and the relationship that I have developed with the Heavenly Father during my time of trial and tribulations. And I'm not going to focus on my health, but I'm going to focus more on my spiritual journey with the Heavenly Father because that outweighs my health situation. And I got to tell you, because I focus and depended on God during that period, that it has blessed me, that it outweighed my medical situation, that God completely brought me through it, that it, like, again, it outweighs the scariness of that medical situation where I've heard people, now I'm hearing from people on the outside asking me, saying, you know, you were at a life, you were at a life situation where you were like life or death. And God kept that scariness from me. And then, you know, as I said in the scriptures, that he fills us with his power rather than with the spirit of fear. God fills us with his power to overcome any fear or doubt. So basically, the Heavenly Father is truly, truly magnificent. And I glorify his name. Now, I'm going to tell you, so people think that I've been doing this, working on these kind of videos and, and just, you know, serving God for like years. No, 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 no. I got to tell you, and this is from, again, this is from my humble beginnings, and I have to share with you, and I, you know, kind of don't want to admit, but I admitted that I was one of those lukewarm Christians where, you know, I gave time to God when it was time to go to church on Sunday, um, when you have your, you know, Wednesday night Bible studies, you know, sometime I would attend, sometime I would you know, do it online, whatnot, and sometimes I just didn't, and sometimes it was, if I felt like going to church on Sunday, then I'd give God time if I went, and you know, and that, I was too, I pretty much was just involved in the world more so than God, even though I knew God, I have truly come to know God during this period of my trial and tribulations that now I cannot see myself without having God in it. So you see how God has changed me personally, and that's what's going to be in the book that's coming out. It's going to it's my personal journey with the Heavenly Father. So for those that are looking and seeing, you know, is this book going to be controversial? It may be to some because many traditional churches want to keep God in that box. You know, they don't think God can work outside the scriptures, and they don't think that God can do miracles today and do so much. But I got to tell you from personal firsthand experience, that is total opposite. God is a living God of today. And for those that are looking to say, when you say God, you mean that is Jehovah. He's known by many names, um, Jehovah, Yahweh. And then you look at his son, Jesus. Jesus is also known as Yeshua. And then you got to look at the Holy Spirit. All of that exists. And I'm telling you from firsthand experience, the blessing. And when I said, again, when I start beginning with the book, when the book comes out, my book is going to actually, the book is going to align with God's word and my truly, my walk with the Heavenly Father. So I'm excited. I, I, I can't wait. And I've been faithful to the Heavenly Father from my moment when he intervened in my life. I have stayed with God because God has stayed with me throughout this whole entire experience where life lesson has truly learned for me. And I cannot wait to share, just like I'm sharing with those on YouTube, imagine when I come and I do my speaking and it's in person and when the book comes out, it is going to be more than just life changing. It's going to change the world and make people 
come to understand and realize that God is a truly a living God today, that he truly does exist. And I'm telling you, it has been a journey like no other, because one thing I have learned where I thought most traditional churches would embrace you, it has been like somewhat the total opposite. So not many churches are doing God's will the way God wants it to be done. And that's where you come in and you look at man's church. Man is only doing for man. Even in the church, they're doing mostly for man. They don't put God first. And I'm telling you from firsthand, so those that are looking to looking for a relationship with the Heavenly Father, I am so happy that I'm able to help with that and set that example because God has truly had his hand on me and guided me through my whole journey of having that relationship with him. So when I present myself and to promote the book and, and just doing the first thing I want people to know, I'm not just promoting the book. I'm promoting God's will first and foremost, and then I'm promoting book the book behind it. But I just want people to truly know that God is among us today. When you look at all the chaotic stuff, all the horror that's going on, I got to tell you, look at it this way. Look at, at what Satan is trying to do, because he knows. He himself knows that God is truly a living God of today and that his time, Satan's time, is running out. So I want to help and bring uh, many souls as I can possible to the Heavenly Father while we're here on earth. That is my assignment. God wants the world to know that he is a truly living God of today. Therefore, his son is a living king. Jesus is the son of God. He did not die on the cross for no reason. He died for our sins. And that's why we have to be living for Jesus. We have to believe. And we need to bring back faith into the world. That's why I said, I, I'm not afraid to speak for God because I witness his power, his glory. And people think that, oh, you've probably been doing this for so many years. No, 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 no. My journey with the Heavenly Father has always been throughout, but I got to tell you, I became, it came a point in my life during my time where it should have been a tragedy. God turned my tragedy of losing my sight. And then and during that testing and trying to figure out what happened with my sight, and doctors picked up and said that I suffered not only did I suffer a massive stroke, but I had strokes behind that massive stroke. And I got to tell you, God brought me through it. I am true living testimony. I am a true walking example of living and walking by faith rather than by sight. Because I had no choice when I lost my sight. But you know what? Through my whole journey, God has spiritually opened my eyes where I see a lot more clearer than I've done when I had 2020 vision. And I'm just so thankful. And I'm telling you, God was so powerful moving in my life at that period, which was back in July of 2023, that I am willing to continue to go through the exact same process to be drawn near to God, to have that same experience. And I cannot wait to share that with the rest of the world. So imagine other people out there that are wanting to kind of tell their stories or, or say the works that God has done in their life. We need to be open to God. Open your heart up to God. The world needs to know more of God. Society today has closed the door on God and taking him out of everything from the churches to the politics. God created all of that, y'all. So I'm just telling from experience, by me adding God to my daily life, my life and my journey has been nothing but truly blessed, just blessful, very blessful. And yeah, there has been a lot of ups and downs, but you know what? God's will has overrode that. God has done more good for me than I've seen of bad. So I'm telling you, just being a vessel for the Heavenly Father, I can't wait 
to share my journey with the world, not with just with the book, but he's taught me so much in those, and it's just that period that I've learned in any years of growing up in the church. And I'm not knocking churches, and that's what God has taught me. That you again, I'm not in competition with man. What I am being is doing the will of God. I'm being led by the heavenly Father. And that is so far more greater than trying to please man. And I want people to know that the success of the book and everything is a part of God's blessing for me. My thing is I value the most and first foremost is having a relationship with the Heavenly Father. I have de developed a relationship with God that is just so beautiful that I want to share with every human being that is willing to open their heart and their mind to the experience that God had brought me through. And it has been a journey that needs to be told. And I'm just willing and continue to be willing to do the will of God and put him first and let everything else follow. So that's my purpose is to serve God first. And to truly serve God with a humble heart, with a pure heart. My relationship and time with the Heavenly Father, he has taught me how to be a way to, to his heart. He's given me his wisdom to take in a path to his heart. See, a lot of people don't think that God has a massive heart. He's very merciful. He's graceful. He's so peaceful. I mean, just even talking of him and talking about this, it's just, it lifts my, lift my spirits. That's why you see me saying now, as, as I can, can, you know, continue to say now, I say, stay lifted in the faith because God has told me personally, the power is in the faith. And for those that are seeking a relationship, a better relationship in their life, give it to God, turn it over to God. I will help guide you and teach you the way God has taught me. I've had two greatest teacher of all time. That first teacher was the Heavenly Father. That second teacher was the Son, Jesus Christ. And I got to tell you, just witnessing the power of the Father and the Son, as well as the Holy Spirit, has truly been such a blessing where I, I don't even concern myself about the naysayers or, or how people might look at me because you know what? My main concern is how God sees me and I don't want to disappoint God. I want to continue to be rewarded by God. I want to continue to do God's will, to do my best for God because the ending that God has in store for me is a blessing and that's what I want to teach the world today. We need to focus on living. So many people now are focused on one of the negativeness of, you know, I'd rather just die, die. Do you know if you're not walking with God or you're not having a relationship with the Heavenly Father, what's at store at the end? And I got to tell you, that evil one, Satan, no, that's a route we do not want to go. There is no peace. There's no life there with the devil. All life is in Christ. Life is with the Heavenly Father. It's with His kingdom. And that's my purpose, is turning souls to God, bringing many souls to God while we're living, while we're here on earth. God wants us to live our best life for Him. He wants us to live. He wants us to be at peace, even through chaotic times. Even through situations where I went through, God kept me at peace that I didn't know how bad my situation was until you you look at the medical records and then you look and you see people and doctors saying this and people saying that on the outside. God kept me covered and at peace on the inside that I didn't have time to be worried and look at my situation and say, oh, whoa, well, with me, I, I can't see, I can't do this, I have to stay still. No, God said no. Life, like flowing water, it keeps flowing. God kept flowing within me. He says, we're going to turn this tragedy into my triumph. 
you're going to be better even more than what you was before. And God has kept his word and his promise to me. And that's why I am keeping my word to the heavenly father and doing his will. And this is like I told you, um, as before, when book the book that's coming out, that book was written for me being, when God gave me the book I did, I was blind. I was truly blind. I could not see. And I kept saying, how am I going to able to write a book that I can't even see? And God says, I'm going to become your eyes. I'm going to become your hands. That's why I said he's narrator of my book. That's why he gets full credit. I'm giving God the credit that's due to him. And I love that because with the credit, when you give God credit, man gets the rewards. And I'm just so thankful to be a, a humble vessel for God and being able to just say, you know what? I, I love getting out there to speak for you. I'm excited. And, and I'm just telling people from experience because I am a homebody. I don't like to go out of town and travel and go here and there. I'd rather be, you know, time off, just sit at home. But I'm willing to do this for the Heavenly Father because it's so much value. I'm excited. I'm, I just can't wait to share my journey with the rest of the world in person and visit and sit down and fellowship and fellowship the way God wants us to fellowship, not the way man wants it to be. And I'm telling you, you guys, once and once the book comes out, which we are very much there, and actually, like I said, I don't want to say too much without giving it away, but um, I do have an upcoming event this month. And that's going to be promoting God's will. And then it's going to be promoting the book. And what I love about that is I know people look at me saying, you know, you will be a great pastor. You, God has already given me the gift and ordained a title what he wants me to be for him. So I'm doing for the Heavenly, Heavenly Father first. And if it's in his will for me to be a pastor, to eventually, you know, maybe even do a church, then I would do that under the will and authority of God. For right now, I am just being that vessel that he wants me to be for him. And I'm moving according to accordingly the way God wants me to move. I'm not led or moved by man. My whole journey on this whole path has been led by the Heavenly Father. I am backed by a kingdom, a full massive kingdom. And I cannot wait to share my journey. And has it been more ups than down? Yes, it has. Because with God, everything is uplifting. But the human side will share with you because it has taught me and God had told me himself that I was going to see a lot of red tapes in these traditional churches and exactly that. But it does not stop me for doing God's will because wherever God puts me, that's where I will go and follow. If God wants me to sit outside and, and fellowship with people at a park, that's what I'm willing to do because it's all for him, not them. It will reach them through him. So just my journey with the hand and father has been such a blessing that I want to be able to reach everybody. I'm not looking at your ethnic group. I'm not looking at your background. I'm not looking at your sexuality. None of that. I want you to be how God looks at us. I look at the heart. So those who are truly want to have a truthful relationship with the Heavenly Father and know, truly know that God exists today, I'm telling you, I'm going to help set that example because God has made an example out of me for him. And I'm just so thankful. And But I stay humble to him because I want to do his will first. But I want to be able to reach mass people. And the one thing I've learned is, you know, not all churches, but certain churches I've come in contact with, I know they're closed doors upon people. And that's, God is not that way. God does not close doors on us. He opens, he embraces us. Jesus was on this earth. He embraced everybody. He sat among the people. He didn't put himself above man, but he sat in fellowship with man because God has the father had led him that way and 
to those prophets that came before me. And I know when God had put their hands on them, what they went through. Such a blessing. Truly a blessing. And this is what I'm speaking of today. And like I said, with the podcast, the video is a little bit longer. But I want to share the moment with you. And, and like I said, and I'm going to be doing many things to come for the Heavenly Father. And he's continuing to bless me. God has been stronger and given me strength to keep going. Where, you know, somebody asked me recently, I said, you know, are, is your health going to be up for you to travel? I've already got the clearance by the Heavenly Father. So I'm not even worried about it. In fact, let me show you how God works. God already gave me the okay to say, you're traveling for me. You're covered. And he just showed that example. When I went to saw my last neurologist and I saw my doctor, they gave me clearance to travel. So as, as I said, just like God keeps his promises, I'm keeping my promise to God and I'm doing his will. So I'm excited to begin the you know this part of the journey that started with me back in july i'm just more thankful that i'm still going strong for god and the reason why i continue to go strong for god because god continues to go strong within me not only just physically but spiritually so that's all i want to say so far on the podcast i just want you guys to take that in and know that i'm speaking truly from my heart i'm speaking from the Holy Spirit that God allows to flow in me. You've heard it from OT. It's going to be a shaking in these traditional churches that it was, I've heard someone say. And that is true because God is all that. God is truly a living God of today. You've heard it from OT. God bless and thank you for your time. And remember, stay lifted in the faith. Amen.